I'm very pleased to welcome you to the Phyllis Schlafly Constitution Center here just off of uh, Capitol Hill. We all have National Guards in our respective states. So this is a states' rights effort, and, and we should be following the, our Constitution the way it's written. What the Lieutenant Governor from Idaho was alluding to was a bill that has been coined the Defend the Guard Act. What it really does is just says, hey, um, our state's National Guard units, um, which the Governor is the Commander-in-Chief of, uh, will not be relinquished into federal control and sent overseas into undeclared wars into combat zones unless there is an official congressional declaration of war that's passed. My intent is to um, bring Pat's bill forward and uh, I'm hoping we're the first state in the nation and it'll happen this, this, uh, this go around uh, with uh, my partner in crime, Representative Andy Clifford, who's also from the state of Wyoming. This is veterans and mothers of veterans and fathers of veterans and those individuals moving forward and saying this is enough. I never thought I'd be here really um, talking about this issue but when Tyler called me up and asked me to come and defend this movement to bring our U.S. troops home I knew in my heart of hearts that I got elected to be a leader to not work within what's possible but to change what is, is possible. This was started in Idaho uh, by Dan McKnight and he came to me during the session. He uh, talked to me a few other times and decided that he would like to do a resolution. It failed, um, not by a lot, but a little bit, and then Dan and I went to those people that had the concerns, the opposition, and talked with them and to find out, you know, what are your concerns with this? Why, are, why is this an issue for you? Our people who are in the New Hampshire National Guard are exhausted. They really can't take anymore. Their families can't take anymore. Their employers can't take anymore. I am going to fully support bringing forth a measure like this, uh, like the Defend Our Guard Act uh, in New Hampshire. We certainly want all of our troops to come home uh, so that they can recover. At the end of the day, um, especially for the National Guards, these are ent entities of the state. Uh, and this is an opportunity for states, I think, to act like states, um, to flex the muscle of states, to, you know, we have a vertical separation of powers too, and to draw attention to the issue, raise the issue, and put external pressure upwards back onto the federal government. We're going to be introducing this legislation in Michigan. I know it's not going to be easy to get done, but it's the right issue. It's the right thing to do, and it's not a one-party issue. It's a bipartisan <clears> thing. <throat> and that is incredibly important in today's day and age, I think. So my plan is to file this in the State Senate this next upcoming legislative <clears throat> session uh, to work to try to get this passed. We're going to have a lot of money against us. There's going to be a lot of power. The establishment isn't going to be in favor of this by any means. They want to continue the status quo. If you get a lot of these, a lot of us passing these laws in the books that are strict, we're talking about preventing possibly or making them think twice about uh, uh, another Iraq like Iran or Syria. If you run into the argument of constitutionality that states can't deny the president the right to activate a National Guard unit, then just say fine, let's abide by the Constitution, declare war, and then this is not in play at all. Well, great. Thank you for your participation. Thanks for all of your efforts and best of luck. Thank you.